Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex market preview for uh, the week beginning Sunday, January 29th, 2023, ending Friday, February 30th. January is already in the books. Unbelievable. Um, all right, let's get to it. Just look at the dollar index. <laughs> Dead flat. Nothing to talk about there. There's a 13 buy signal in place, although we've technically violated the risk line already somewhere in there. So, uh, But look how flat that is. Just ridiculous. Um, here's the pound. Dollar also just dead flat all week. Euro dollar also dead flat all week. Pound yen didn't do anything either. So skipping through the forex pretty quick because there's really not much to discuss here. Here's the ES front month futures contract. It's the daily chart of the broad market in futures form. And as you can see, we finally crawled up enough to get that 13 sell signal. Remember, we were close back in December, but uh, the asterisk would have been the 13, but you need to be above the eight to do the traditional count. And so we had several times that qualified, but we finally got above the eight. And uh, so now we have a 13 cell signal in place. On the ES, that puts that static trend line at 3,621 as the uh, possible target. And that is interesting. S&P cash, uh, same deal, obviously. Nothing different there. We got the uh, NASDAQ 100. Break it out to three month highs, unfortunately, with the sell signal in the broad market. We'll see what that really means. Uh, Russell 2000, um, uh, also breaking out to three, four, five months highs, maybe. Uh, crude oil, it's just under 80 at 79.68. And uh, gold, uh, you know, hanging near the, the highs of the last seven months or so. Interesting. Um, here's a look at Bitcoin, which has rallied back to 23,561 as I do this on Sunday. So come back up quite a bit from that 16,000, well, 50% gain in the last month on Bitcoin. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, very flat as well. Not much there. The VIX sitting down, it's still holding that risk line. It uh, hasn't closed below it from the 13 buy signal and uh, sitting at 18.51. Advanced decline ratio on the New York uh, was just over 550 positive on Friday. The trend closes at 1.01. .01. Puts the 10-day moving average at 1.26, which is not a signal. And let's look at the intra-week stuff. So this is five-minute candle. If we're going back, you can see the prior Friday on the far left. So kind of a very flat opening and, and rallied early on Monday, then just dead flat for the rest of the day. Tuesday was one of the flattest days I've seen in a long time. Uh, Wednesday, we gapped back down, so now we're even for the week and rallied back up. Thursday, a small gap up that filled and drifted higher. Friday, basically drifted a little higher. In the end, we gained... Uh, you know, about 100 points on the S&P uh, for the week, and here's the NASDAQ side, um, which gained, you know, a little bit more. But look how flat that Tuesday was. Oh, that was just completely brutal. Um, all right, let's go through some of our big stocks here. Um, you know, Apple gained on Friday. We're looking for signals here as well. We don't really see any there. Amazon, uh, you know, new highs for the last few months, obviously. Meta um, really has come off the lows here. This thing's almost doubled in the last three months, two months. Uh, Google um, off the lows as well. Goldman Sachs um, didn't do much, and this has been drifting down a bit since they had the earnings issue. Netflix back near highs for the last six plus months. Tesla uh, had a big update with earnings on uh, Friday, but there's no signals here either. Nvidia um, also at highs for the last six months. Think about that. That was all, this one's also doubled since uh, back in October, and Zoom uh, has crawled itself back up to seventy-four dollars and fifteen cents. In terms of economic data um, coming out here in the week ahead, uh, we've got. Uh, let's see. We'll start with Monday. No data in the U.S. at all. Um, not much around the world either. Tuesday, we've got uh, <laughs> um, some stuff overnight out of Europe. None of it seems to be major. We've got uh, the housing price index here in the U.S., the employment cost index. Uh, Chicago PMI at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time at consumer, CB Consumer Confidence at 10 um, here at uh, Eastern Time. Uh, going into, uh, we got the uh, manufacturing PMI numbers from around the world uh, going into Wednesday. Um, and then um, ISM manufacturing PMI, jolt job openings here, construction spending. Crude oil inventories at 10.30. Oh, we got a Fed announcement, Fed rate meeting. So Tuesday, Wednesday, two-day meeting announcements at 2 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday, and then the uh, press conference at 2.30, of course. That would be interesting. Um, interesting to see what they do there. Uh, 
let's see, going to the next day, the Bank of England also has a rate announcement on Thursday. Uh, we have our weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers, along with the challenge of job cuts, um, unit labor costs, non-farm productivity, and then natty gas at 1030. And then going into Friday, uh, services PMI numbers from around the world and our uh, unemployment rate. So we'll be half size for Forex anyways, uh, Tuesday going into Wednesday because of the Fed, and then Thursday going into Friday because of the unemployment rate. We also have the services PMI number here on Friday. So we will just see what we get. I wouldn't say it's been the most exciting start to the year. Um, and I do worry about that 13 sell signal on the uh, S&P ES. So we'll just see what that leads to. Charts as usual brought to you by NinjaTrader. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.